Hello and thank you for watching this video about IPv6 router advertisements. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I put together this video because during my IPv6 Security Essentials class, assigning IPv6 address is always a big topic and router advertisements is probably one of the simplest way to accomplish that. If you would like to learn more about IPv6, we also have an IPv6 summit coming up on July the 6th in Washington, D.C. To learn more about that, uh, see isc.sans.edu slash IPv6. But enough introductions. I assume that you're all familiar with the basic look and feel of IPv6 addresses. IPv6 addresses span a total of 128 bits or 16 bytes. However, one important concept is that these addresses need to be understood in two parts. The first half of the address is usually referred to as the network part. It identifies the network and is the only part needed to route the packet. The second half of the address is referred to as the interface part. It identifies the system within the network. A system may make up its own interface ID. As all systems within the same link layer share the same network address, the interface ID has to be unique within this link layer network. This is also the reason why you sometimes find the interface ID being derived from the MAC address. For IPv4, we usually use DHCP to assign addresses. We still have this option in IPv6, but more likely you're going to find router advertisements. A router will send these advertisements periodically to all hosts on the local network, or the host may actually send a router solicitation, which is then responded to by the router with a router advertisement directed at that particular host. These router advertisement messages are ICMP v6 messages with a type of 134. The solicitations use a type of 135. They start with a router advertisement header followed then by a number of options. So what you'll see here in the next couple slides is sort of a simplified TCP dump output from a router advertisement packet. Like I mentioned, it's ICMP v6. The hop limit of all of these messages is 255. The client, the receiver, will actually have to verify that this hop limit is 255 because this will prevent these router advertisement messages from being injected from outside your network. The source IP is of course the link local address of the router. If this was like in this example, an unsolicited router advertisement, then the destination address is our all local host multicast address, which is the closest thing we have to broadcast in IPv6. Following this IPv6 and ICMPv6 header, we then have our router advertisement header. The first interesting part here is that the hop limit is being advertised. This is the hop limit that the host will now use for all of its outbound packets. So it's no longer really up to the operating system to pick a starting hop limit. Once it sees this router advertisement packet, it will now start with a hop limit of 64 and 64 being the default. Next we have flags and a router priority. We'll come back to these flags, but if we have multiple routers, then of course the priority could define which router will be preferred. There are various lifetimes and other timers defined here. They will tell us how frequently to expect these messages. And if we stop seeing them, how long should we still use this particular router? 
Next, we have a number of options and usually the first and most prominent option is of course the prefix information. In this example, the advertised prefix is 2001470D8461. So these are the first 64 bits of our IPv6 address or the network part of the IPv6 address. This comes with a time for which uh, this advertisement is valid for. This uh, could be compared to a DHCP lease time, but note the router has no idea whether or not someone is accepting an address or is using an address out of this network. This is purely to advertise what network address is being used here. It's up to uh, the host to define the interface ID. They're not like in DHCP managing a limited address pool. Then there are a number of additional options. One option that has been added later but is widely used already is an option to set a recursive DNS server. This is another thing we typically do with a DHCP in IPv4 networks. In IPv6, our router advertisement may also tell us what the DNS server is, in this case 2001db835. Other options include the MTU to be used for this network. Here we advertise an MTU of 1280. That may be a little bit small, but this is the smallest possible MTU for IPv6. If we use an IPv an MTU of 1280, then we will never really see any fragmentation of our traffic. But let's come back to uh, the flags. There are really two flags that are commonly used and that's the managed flag which tells us whether there is a DHCP server. If this flag is set then we will pick up additional addresses via DHCP. So these addresses will be used in addition to the address advertised by the router advertisement if there was a prefix advertised by the router. The other flag is, well, the other configuration flag. It tells us whether there are any other parameters we should consult DHCP for, for example, DNS servers, NTP servers, and the like. If the manage flag is set, then this other configuration flag is implied. But what may happen, for example, is that you don't need DHCP for addresses. You just need it for these other parameters. In this case, you use the router advertisement to advertise a prefix. And then DHCP you only use to advertise DNS servers. So a quick summary here. Router advertisements allow for simple stateless auto configuration. We no longer need a DHCP server in IPv6. It doesn't allow for a lot of control, doesn't allow for a lot of management, like we don't have any leases per se, we don't have any logs that tell us who accepted a certain address at a certain time or relinquished it. We still have to do that separately. But the big, big advantage of router advertisements is it's widely supported and it's really the default mechanism. DHCP v6 is not supported on all IPv6 devices. Here are a couple of references, mostly RFCs here. One thing I want to point out is RFC 4861, the current neighbor discovery RFC, does cover router advertisements. It does replace 2461. Kind of interesting how the numbering worked out in this case. If you have any further questions, comments, uh, please contact me at jolrich at sans.edu or again for more details about the IPv6 class or the summit isc.sans.edu slash IPv6 and my Twitter handle is J-U-H-U-L-L-R-I-C-H. Thank you.